Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Rock Bottom Airsoft. It's good to see you again. If this is your first time here, then as always, it is good to see you and I hope you're going to stick around. Okay, well, welcome to our weekend video. Those of you who follow the channel already will know that we normally upload a video every midweek. That's normally on a Wednesday. Those videos will normally be gameplay based. If I haven't managed to get to a game that particular week, then it will normally be another one of these studio videos. And every weekend we will normally upload on a Saturday. And in those videos I always look at all sorts of things, airsoft, gear reviews, replica reviews, tech, and everything in between for our great sport and hobby that is Airsoft. <laughs> so if you have been enjoying my series of videos and you haven't subscribed already, do get subscribed to the channel and then that way you won't miss any of my uploads. Okay, well, with that out of the way, what are we going to be looking at today? Well, you guys that have been following the channel probably recognise this as the JG Bar 10 that I was using in gameplay uh, last week. And this week's gameplay videos would have featured this JG Bar 10. Now, when I was at my last game, uh, there was a young gentleman there who was getting into the sport, the hobby, new. And they were looking to do some upgrades to their particular rifle. Uh, I think they had a well, uh, which was VSR based. And a few questions about taking the replica down. So what I thought we'd do today, with me having used this quite a bit over the last few games... I thought it's due for a clean and a, and a bit of an oil up. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to run through how you take down, uh, well, this is a JG Bar 10, as I say, but the principles for taking this down should apply to any VSR compatible replica, which is along the same pattern as this. So the VSR 10, that type of thing. Okay, I think it's a Well MB03 that's, that's maybe the VSR well version, and obviously you've got the Sima, I think it's the 701 or 2. Somebody could correct me on that in the comments. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there are a lot of VSR compatible replicas out there, which you may want to do some upgrades on, uh, or you generally might just want to take it down, give it a clean up, and do some modifications to. I'm not going to go through the modifications today uh, and things you can do to them. What I'm going to do today is show you how to take this replica apart and get to the vast majority of bits that you're going to work on. And don't worry, it's very simple to take down. It's much, much simpler than taking down uh, an AEG, for example. So, let's put this out of the way. We'll have a look at what items you're going to need to do this. First of all, You'll need a 2.5mm hex key, or allen key, as they're called here in the UK. Uh, so you'll need one of those. In the case of the JG Bar 10, you'll also need a large posi drive or Phillips head screwdriver. And for taking your cylinder head off, I find it handy to have some form of needle nose pliers. Now these ones are hooked. Uh, I like the hooked ones to use them for this because I don't know why it just seems easier for me um, but you can get dedicated tools for the cylinder head you can also get straight needle nose pliers which I have as well um, any of those will work and you'll see why when we get on to that bit okay um, you'll also need a small screwdriver when we come to remove the trigger box so that's the uh, the bit that I tend to use for taking off the trigger box but again I'll show you that as we take it down but that as you can see for taking it down is not a lot of tools <laughs> and that is all you'll need now if you're going to be carrying on with cleaning um, and going along with me on the cleaning for these I like to have some silicon grease make sure it is silicon grease not petroleum based grease Primarily it just makes it simpler. Um, you can use, you know, Teflon greases and petroleum based greases on metal to metal contact. But just to simplify things, if you're going to be using grease in your sniper, stick to the silicon grease. That way you don't need to worry about having any effect on your plastics or rubber seals. And you'll also want some silicon oil. I've mentioned before that I use silicon shock oil from the RC world. This 900 weight seems to work quite well for me. Um, and I get that online. It's very affordable. 
and you get a big bottle which should last you for ages and I use it for all sorts. I will put a link in the description as to where you can get the grease and the oil just to make it easier for you, okay? So that is everything we need for cleaning. Obviously you want a rag and maybe a bit of kitchen roll or workshop towel for, for cleaning your hands up and things like that. And that, that's, that's your lot for, for service and maintenance as it were. So, let's get straight into it and we'll start dismantling this replica and see where we're at. Now before you start dismantling your replica, ensure that there is no magazine in there and also you can see the chamber on one of these snipers in there. I hope you can make that out on camera. But in that chamber, just make sure you've not got a BB loaded. Maybe do a dry fire um, in a safe direction before you start. <laughs> that way you're not going to end up with a BB flying across your living room or workshop or wherever you might be and causing some damage that you don't want. <laughs> so first things first, we've got screws that we need to remove to take the stock off. And that is the first thing we're going to want to do. Obviously, if you've got a scope mounted, it's much, much easier to take the scope off before you start. And then you can just turn the rifle upside down like this. So this is where you need your two and a half millimeter hex key. We're going to remove these two screws here. So that's this one and this one. We're going to remove those with the hex key. And then just behind the trigger guard, you have a Phillips head screw and that's where your large Phillips head screwdriver comes in handy for removing that one. So the screws you want to remove is this one, this one, and this one. I'll crack on with that and then I'll come back to you once we've got those out. Okay guys, once the screws are out, that's our three screws out, you'll notice that the screws are not all the same length and it does matter where they go so make sure you keep an eye until you've done it a few times and you know where they go but on your first attempt if it is your first attempt make sure you can remember which one goes where so the short one this one is the shortest bolt that goes in the front medium sized one which is this one that goes in the middle and then the long phillips head one that goes behind your trigger guard now once you've done that you will want to move your bunt handle to the open position and then the whole stock should just slide off like so. You can put your stock to one side, we don't need that for now, we can give that a clean up if you want with your rag afterwards, but we don't need it. Now, your replica may not look exactly the same as mine, this has had quite a few upgrades, it's the uh, Springer Custom Works S-Trigger version 9.2, I'm always going about, superb upgrade, um, well I like it anyway. <laughs> uh, so. That's us down to our receiver and barrel assembly. Uh, the inner barrel is inside. Now, we're just wanting to do some cleaning here, so we don't need to worry too much about the hop chamber. If you want to take the hop chamber out, you can do. There's two screws, one, one. Take those screws out and the whole barrel will slide out. The inner barrel will slide out of the back of the receiver. If you want to take the receiver off, you've got a screw there, you take that screw out, unscrew the outer barrel, so just screw off, this whole receiver will come away. But we're jumping the gun, before we even get to that, the next thing that we want to do is get our cylinder out so we can give that a clean up, and if you're going to be doing upgrades, you'll definitely be looking possibly at upgrading your cylinder. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the trigger box here. Now as you can see, we've got a screw here, and a screw here, we're going to be removing those screws. This is where your smaller Phillips head screwdriver comes in handy. So undo those screws. Now again, I find it handy not to lose anything, so you want to keep hold of these screws. So I'll take those screws out and I'll come back to you. Okay guys, that's the screws out. Um, when you're taking these screws off, just be aware there sometimes is small shape proof washers on them. If you can make that out on camera, there's a little washer on the base. So don't lose the washers, you want those because you don't want your screws backing themselves off with the vibration that you get from firing the replica. So you've got your two screws out and as you can see, the trigger doesn't just pop out. Um, it's it's going to stay put. Now when you come to removing the trigger, grasp the side of the trigger box and pull straight up. Now it could be quite stiff, but 
you just lift straight up and this whole assembly should come out you can put that to one side now if you are wanting to oil anything up on this trigger while we're on the cleaning make sure your springs are lubricated any moving parts in here are lubricated the vast majority of it's sealed up a um, bit of lubrication around the bottom there can't hurt but make sure you clean away any excess because you don't want loads lying around so that's that's the trigger box out so we're getting somewhere now now at this point because you've removed the trigger box you'll notice how the gap i hope you can make that out on camera it lines up here that's important to remember for when you put it back but now when you pull the bolt back it will slide all the way out of the receiver so let's put that to one side for now now at this point if you were looking to take out your inner barrel and your hop chamber to make it easy for yourself you can undo this screw here twist off the receiver here and that will leave you with your outer barrel and it will leave you with your inner barrel assembly inside it once you've got this on its own one screw here one screw here remove the block and the whole inner barrel and hop assembly will slide out the back of the outer barrel and it's as simple as that now I don't need to do that today because I'm only doing some cleaning and maintenance I can clean the barrel out with everything in situ there the inner barrel that is so like I say just a recap if you were wanting to go completely down and take everything out remove this screw here then twist if you have a screw in there might be worth loosening that off as well uh, but then twist and that should undo and then you'll be left with your outer barrel with your hop assembly fastened inside two screws and you can take it out to be fair i do that just to, for simplicity to make it easier so i'm not catching on my guide rings and that type of thing but that is it um, we don't need this this part now um because we're finished with it so we could put that to one side so that leaves us with the guts of your spring sniper this is your cylinder i'll be giving this a clean up your bolt handle remains attached now you might want to do some upgrades or some cleaning you can remove your spring guide which you can see you've got your piston and your main spring and them are the only components now to get into those components the next thing you're going to need is your needle nose pliers or in my shape the bent needle nose pliers and if you look at the end of the, the cylinder there, guys, I hope you can make that out on camera. You've got two little holes. Well, they don't go all the way through, but they're like indentations at the end of the cylinder. And what you're going to do is, is you get your needle nose pliers, or if you have a dedicated tool, you put it in. Be careful not to scratch your nozzle. And then you simply twist counterclockwise until it gets loose now once it gets loose be very careful guys there could be a lot of tension on your piston and you don't want it to come firing out once you unscrew this section this will unscrew this is your cylinder head and that's that off once your cylinder head is out you can simply drop all of your core components out if your spring guide is unwilling to come just give it a bit of a persuasion it sometimes get stuck with the pressure and it should drop right out and then that's you guys so basically that's your spring guide your piston and your main spring all separated up and that is it so if you wanted to change any of those components that is how you get to them so what i'll do is i'm going to give this a quick clean up and clean all these parts off, give them a re-lube, and then we'll go through putting it back together. So bear with me a second, guys, while I do that, and I will come back to you through the miracle of editing. Take me about a second, okay? Okay, guys, there you go, boom, cleaned. Now, all I've done there is, is put your spring guide in, put your spring over the spring guide, put your piston over the spring, like so, and then take your cylinder head, put it back on, and then standard threads so go clockwise to tighten righty tighty be careful of the o-ring that's around the top here and a, a point for maintenance if you're going to be doing some cleaning and oiling like i am uh, put a bit of silicon oil or in my case i put silicon grease on your o-ring also do the same on your piston rings that way it's going to grease the inside of your cylinder it's going to make sure that your o-rings don't dry out and that they stay nice and lubed and, and airtight and uh, makes everything just generally run smoother and then screw it back together 
And then once it starts getting tight, take your needle nose pliers again, put them in the two divots there, and then tighten. Sometimes it might be easier turning the cylinder instead of the pliers. And once it's nice and tight, that is your cylinder or bolt assembly back together. So next up, we need to put it back into the receiver. So if you've been doing your barrel at this point, you want to put your inner barrel back in, put this block back on with those two screws. Screw this back onto your receiver and then put your locking screw in and then that is you good to go. If you've got any dirt on here, obviously now is the time to give this a clean out. Just making doubly sure because I seem to have got oil everywhere during my maintenance. <laughs> so once you've done that, you are ready to put your bolt back in and reattach the trigger box. So the bolt, just the reverse, slide your bolt back in as if you were cocking the rifle. And you'll see there, I hope you can make that out on camera, that if I move that, it lines up with this hole here. So basically, once your bolt's back in, you want it to line up with that hole there. Okay? And then once you've got that lining up, you can then take your trigger box and you have this long section of the trigger here that goes at the back of the spring guide and then we just push it back down in it, like so. Make sure your screw holes are lined up. It won't go anywhere once you've got it locked in. Make sure your screw holes are lined up and then take the two screws that you removed earlier and screw it back down. I'll do that just now and I shall come back to you, okay? Okay guys, so a couple of things worth mentioning when you're screwing these two screws back down. The receivers on your standard VSR base rifle on the vast majority of them including this JG Bar 10 they aren't going to be the best quality metals in the world and it's quite easy to strip out the threads on these screws uh, where you're screwing them in on the receiver you don't want to do that so do them tight but don't go absolutely lurry on them and uh, make them strip out because you don't want that happening at all now at this point if you want you can test the replica and make sure it's fine just pull your bolt back pull the trigger make sure it goes off however i'm not going to do that just now i'm pretty confident it should work uh, but i am going to put it back in the stock um again the reverse of what we've done already so take your stock Take your receiver and basically just drop it in. Make sure it lines up and then flip it over and put your bolt handle back down. And then once it's in, your long screw goes at the back here behind the trigger guard, put that one in. Now what I would say guys is what I've found the easiest when you're doing this is, is don't fully tighten them up till you've got them all in so it can move a bit and they can line up. And then if you want, I usually go with the front one next, just to get everything in nice and tight before I go with the middle one. So again, this is where you'll need your two and a half millimeter Allen key. Just, uh, if it feels like it's too tight at the start, then just try again, because again, these screws will also cross thread, and you don't want to strip out the, the threads when you're screwing these in because then your stock's going to be all wobbly. So once you've got that starting to tighten up, then put your middle one in. Again, you'll feel it line up, and then tighten down. And then you can tighten them up. As I say, a reasonable amount of uh, firmness, but not, uh, not completely to town, because again, you don't want to strip these out. Once you've got all three of them tight, then you might want to double check that none have loosened up and that they're all equally tight okay and once you've done that that is you your replica should now fire without an issue so there we go guys that is the basics of taking down one of these vsr based replicas taking it down to the bits that matter as i say 
if you want to see a video of me taking the inner barrel out and doing work on the hop chamber we can do that that's not an issue um but you know it's quite simple to do there's not a lot if you're looking at putting a new piston in a new spring if you want to do anything with a cylinder that is everything taken apart even changing receivers as you can see is relatively straightforward with these things as with anything else you could encounter little niggles and compatibility issues but like i say we're not really going into full-on upgrade territory here that's just the basics on on how to take one of these down and how to get to everything and, and and you know how you can clean up everything and get to parts that need cleaning the cylinder is well worth giving a clean up the inside of the cylinder is well worth giving a clean up and it's well worth applying some lubrication as i say with silicon based oils or greases especially to your o-rings to the piston guides that are in there the outer bits and also if you've got a standard cylinder you can put a light oil in on that as well it'll just all ease with making your replica smoother and more fun to fire so there you go guys i really hope you enjoyed that video and i hope it will be useful for you if you have any questions about this replica or about Airsoft in general, any questions for me, then do drop a comment below. I will always respond to comments. I might not get back to you straight away, but I will always respond. If you want any more content from myself, you can find me as Rock Bottom Airsoft on Facebook and Instagram. There's pictures, discussions, just stuff really that follows my journey in Airsoft. And if you've enjoyed it, do drop a like on it. And if you're enjoying my series of videos, as I mentioned earlier, do get subscribed and then you won't miss any of my uploads. But apart from that, thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.